Hello everyone! Today we're going to be making the Sailor Moon school uniform and I am going to be using the Simplicity 8160. I did the Sailor Moon uniform but this can really go so many different anime directions because it's such a general Japanese school uniform. Basically all three views in this pattern are pretty much about the same so I tried to do one that had most of the features in it so at least you have something that will follow most of whichever view that you're going to make. My husband was watching Inuyasha the other day and I realized that Kegomi's outfit was pretty much the same one as this one just in green and she had the necktie instead of the bow. So I really enjoy how versatile this pattern really is. You also don't need too many notions for this pattern which definitely puts it on the easier side because my body is shaped uniquely like everybody else's. In this one I will be doing a size 18 on the top and I will be using a size 22 for the skirt so that it fits my waist. Go ahead and cut out all your pattern pieces. And once that's done, then you're going to mark all your dots and notches on these pieces as well as any placement lines for trim and the pleat lines. Starting off with the front and back, I'm going to do a 5 8 inch seam allowance stay stitch right along the top of the collars on both pieces. Then we're going to go to the darts and I'm going to take a sewing pin and I'm going to connect the two middle dots first pinching the fabric together and then I'll grab the top dot and from there I can pin it down. And then I'll add a few more pins to hold it all in place and I'm going to do this to all four darts. Go ahead and sew these darts. So I just start at the top inner dot as close to the edge as I can and I'm just going to angle the stitch that I'm sewing to line up with those middle dots and I'm going to continue the angle from the middle dots all the way to the bottom. Lay your front and back bodice pieces right sides together and match up the shoulder seams. We're going to sew these down with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Take your collar piece and we're going to add the inner facing, line it up so it matches evenly and then iron it down and you're going to do this to both pieces. Taking one collar piece, you're going to measure in a 1 and 1 8 inch seam allowance and mark this all the way around the edge. And then going back to where I began, I'm going to mark 3 8 inches from the first line and I'm going to mark this all the way around. Take your ribbon and you're going to place it onto this first line, sewing right along as close to the edge on both sides as you can and then you're going to do the same thing to the second line. As long as you sew slowly, the ribbon should perfectly curve around those corners. When you get to the corner, you're going to sew it up to the next direction line. You're going to fold the ribbon back on itself, making sure it's about a fourth of an inch after that line. Then hold on to the bottom corner toward the direction you want to go and fold the ribbon back over again so you have this little triangle fold and your ribbon should directly go into that next direction. So when you're sewing, get to the corner, leaving your needle down. When you lift the presser foot, you can pivot to the new direction and you can continue sewing. Do this for the other corner as well. Once both lines of ribbon are sewn on, place both of your collar pieces right side together. Pin down the outer edge. Sew this down with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. 
Take some scissors and snip off the corners, making sure not to cut past the thread. And then we're gonna add some clips into the curves at the top of the collar so it lays nicely when we turn this out. Once again, making sure not to cut past the thread. Turn your collar piece inside out. Lay out the edges as nicely as you can and then we're going to press this all in place. Base stitch the inner neck part with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Going to the collar on the bodice, line up the neck of the collar, matching the notches in the back and the side seams first. I didn't realize till after, but I guess I didn't fully understand the inner corner parts of the collar, so I ended up just crossing these and sewing them down like that, which I have a way to fix later on in case you do the same. But when you sew down the bottom points, make sure that they are not crossing and they are just meeting in the middle. Sew this down with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Moving on to our front facing, we're going to add the inner facing piece and iron it on to the wrong side and do the same to your back facing. Take both facing pieces and line them up right sides together. Sew these edges with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open the seams. Then do a 1 4 inch seam allowance all along the outside edge. From here you can fold in the edge just after that seam and sew it down or you can serge and zigzag stitch, depending on what you're more comfortable with. Either way, you want a finished edge. Going back to the collar piece, you're gonna lay your facing and your collar right sides together, matching up the notches, the seams, and the center front. Sew this together with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. So in case you're like me and cross those front points, I left the corner of that side open as you can see there's the point from the other side sticking out. So I just have it unstitched enough for that point and I'm going to tuck it back in using some tweezers so that it's hidden inside and once it's tucked up nice and neat I'll just continue sewing that hole closed. Take your scissors and you're going to snip the center front as close to the seam as you can. And once again you're going to make some clips around the curves. Tuck the facing inside. And we're going to press this with an iron to hold it all in place. Move the collar out of the way and you're going to do a 1 4 inch seam allowance top stitch all around the collar to hold the facing in place. You're also going to take your iron and press the darts on the front of your bodice down toward the bottom. And the darts in the back toward the center. With right sides together, match up the sides and pin them together on both sides. And we're going to sew these with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open the seams. Moving on to the sleeves, we're going to do a gathering base stitch across the top curves between the three dots and along the bottom between the two dots. So first starting with a tail of 3 or 4 inches of thread, you're going to start with a 1 4 inch seam allowance leaving a tail of thread at the end, and then the same thing at a 3 8 inch seam allowance. I will link my gathering video down below so it'll give you a more in-depth tutorial on how to do that if you've never done it before or need a little more guidance. Once you've sewn all four gathering base stitches, fold your sleeves right sides together, lining up the long edge and pin this down on both sleeves. 
And we're going to sew this with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. And once again, you're going to iron open these seams. Taking the sleeve band, add your inner facing to the wrong side and iron them on. And then just like we did on the collar, you're going to add the ribbon along both placement lines, sewing down each edge of the ribbon. From the bottom of the sleeve band, you're going to measure up 5 8 inches and fold it over and then iron it in place. Open it back up and then you're going to fold it right sides together lengthwise and sew these edges with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open the seams. Going to the bottom edge that we ironed previously, you're going to cut off half of that seam allowance. Take a sleeve, turning it right side out. Lining up the seam allowance on the sleeve band and the sleeve, place the sleeve inside of the sleeve band, lining up the raw edges, and you're going to gather up the bottom of the sleeve to match the circle of the sleeve band. Once you have it the right size, then just adjust the gathers so they're evenly distributed and pin it all in place. Do this to both sides. Sew these on with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Fold the sleeve band up with the wrong sides together. And you want that folded edge to meet with the seam all the way around, pinning it in place. Turn your sleeves right side out. And then going back to the bodice, Find the notches on the sleeve that coordinate with the sleeve hole on the bodice. And you're going to place your sleeve inside and you can start matching the notches, dots, and seams. After matching that top dot on the shoulder, then you can gather up the sleeves to match the armhole, just like you did with the sleeve band and the bottom of the sleeve. Once you have it gathered to fit the armhole, move the gathers around to evenly distribute them and pin it all in place. Sew the sleeves on at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Once they're sewed on, you can either serge or zigzag stitch to have a finished edge. Going back to the sleeve band, you're going to slip stitch them closed. I also have a video for that and I will leave it linked down below. Last thing to do with the top is to hem the bottom. So the way I like to do a hem is I'm going to fold up the bottom edge 3 8 inches and iron it down all the way across. I will sew this with a 1 4 inch seam allowance. I will go and fold up another 3 8 inches, ironing it down. And then I will sew this down with a 3 8 inch seam allowance or just before the edge. And your top is done. Moving on to the skirt, we're going to take two skirt pieces, lying them right sides together, pinning one edge, then open them back up taking the third piece with right sides together, pinning that edge together. Sew these two edges with a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Grab your zipper and we're going to line up the raw edge of the zipper with the raw edge of the skirt right sides together. Take your ruler and that top silver notch has to be 5 8 inches from the top edge. And you will also line up the teeth of the zipper at a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Pin this down and then we're going to sew it on. Attach a zipper foot, making sure that your needle is on the same side as the teeth. And we're just going to sew this on, 
all the way down. When you get about two inches from the bottom, lift your presser foot and close your zipper up till it's past the presser foot. That way you can easily sew the rest of the zipper down. So this is what you should have so far. Then take the other open end of your skirt and same thing, line up the raw edge with the raw edge of the skirt, right sides together, making sure that it's the same distance from the top and lined up at the 5 8 inch seam allowance. And then you can pin this down and sew it on the same way we did the first time. Go ahead and close up your zipper to make sure everything fits correctly. Grabbing my seam ripper, I'm just gonna take out the bottom seams up until that bottom silver knot. And I'm gonna tuck the bottom tails up out of the way for now. Fold the seam allowance together and you're gonna pin this opening all the way down. We're gonna sew this together, making sure to start about a fourth of an inch above the first seam, just outside of that stitch. And we're gonna sew the rest of the seam all the way down. Make sure to back stitch at the top. So you can see I do my back stitch, and then once I continue, I'm gonna angle it down to a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Iron open the seam. Next, we're going to hem the bottom of the skirt. So fold up the bottom edge 1 4 inches and iron it down all the way around. When you get to the first inner seam allowance, you're gonna measure up two and one eighth inches and you're gonna cut the seam allowance, making sure not to cut past the thread. Open up the seam allowance and iron it open and you can continue folding up the bottom edge, repeating the same thing on the next seam. Then I'm gonna fold up the edge again, one inch, and iron this all the way across. And it should perfectly line up with the seam allowances that you've clipped. Sew this down at a 1 4 inch seam allowance. The next step is going to be making our pleats. So starting with the pleat before the zipper, closest to you, you're gonna fold the fabric on the first mark and match it up with the second mark. Iron it down and pin it in place. Then move on to the next two marks. Doing the same thing, folding the fabric at the first mark and meeting it up with the second. Iron it down and pin it in place. Do this all the way around. For the last pleat, fold it over the zipper, ironing down the bottom half. Pin the bottom half together. Open up your zipper and you're gonna base stitch 5 8 inches all the way along the top. Take your waistband and add your interfacing. Fold up half an inch along one long edge and iron it down all the way across. With right sides together, line up the top edge of the skirt with the raw edge of the waistband. You want the edge of the waistband to hang over 5 8 inches from the zipper. Pin the top edge down all the way across. When you get to the other end, Fold that last pleat back and the waistband should also hang over a 5 8 inches on this side as well. Pin the waistband and the pleat together. Sew this on with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Cut off half of the seam allowance. Open up the waistband as neatly as you can, making sure the seam allowance is inside and iron this all in place. Mm -hmm. 
going to one end of the waistband, fold it in half right sides together and pin it down, doing the same to the other side. And we're going to sew these at that 5 8 inch seam allowance or just before the edge of that zipper or skirt edge. Cut off half of the seam allowance here as well. Turn these corners right side out. Fold the waistband over so the edge lines up with that seam allowance. And iron this in place. Then I'm going to slip stitch this closed. Iron down the top of that last pleat and close up your zipper. Take a fabric marker or chalk and you're going to mark 1 4th inches in from that edge on the waistband. Line it up with the bottom of the waistband and mark the same spot there. And this is where you're going to place your hook and eye. Sew both of these on by hand. The last piece to this outfit is the bow. So taking your bow pieces, add your inner facing, lay these right sides together and pin them all around the edge. Grab your bow end pieces doing the same exact thing. Sew around the edge at a 5 8 inch seam allowance, making sure to leave about a 2 or 3 inch gap at the bottom of each one. Cut off half of the seam allowance as well as clip off the corners. Turn both of these right side out, making sure to poke out the corners. Fold out the edges so they're nice and neat and then go ahead and press them in place. Slip stitch both of those openings closed. Take your knot piece, folding it widthwise, and we're going to sew that edge together with the 5 8 inch seam allowance. Cut off half of the seam allowance. Turn it right side out. Fold this in half with the seam in the middle and iron it in place. Do a base stitch down the center line on both the bow and bow end piece. Gather up the center as much as it'll go and then tie off the ends on both sides to hold them in place. Lay the bow on top of the bow end, pinning the sides together and you can put this aside. Grab your ribbon, cutting out a 7 8 inch piece. Use a lighter to melt the ends so they don't fray. Fold the end of the ribbon 5 8 inches and then tuck the end in again at about halfway and sew this down in place on both sides. Take your snap and open it up, place one side on one end and flip over the other side placing it on the other end so that way they close correctly. Snap your ribbon together and fold it in half to find the center. Match the center of the ribbon with the top center of the bow. Hand stitch this in place. Last take your knot piece and wrap it around the middle so it's nice and tight. And then the open end you're going to fold under the edge so you have a nice finished end and you're going to slip stitch that end down. 
And there you have it. And now you can win love by daylight with Usagi, aka Serena's school outfit. I had once made a cosplay for a friend and I needed this exact pattern, but this pattern didn't exist at the time. So I really had to wing it and kind of put it together with a mishmash of patterns. So I'm so happy they came out with this one because I feel like it's so essential. I mean, it's one of the basic anime looks for the most part. And thankfully it's really not a hard pattern to put together. So. It's something you can definitely whip up real quick for any costume or cosplay that you're trying to go for. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and this helped you out. Please subscribe down below if you have not already and I will see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye!